There we go. Look at that vertical video. You got nothing on this. And it's actually really cool seeing like my modern 4K black magic footage converted into little postage stamp movies. I've never seen this before. It just quit on me. Well, thank you, Premiere. All right, we're just gonna have to do a reboot. Yes, 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 I know. I didn't shut it down properly because it froze. All right, guys, it's time to make a movie. Finally. Oh, I appreciate your patience. Hey guys, how you all doing, really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing really great today too because I'm keeping my promise. I'm back today with the Adobe Premiere 1.0 follow-up video where I'm going to attempt to edit a video in Adobe Premiere 1.0 on a 68K Macintosh. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be amazing. Or very painful or both. I have some things I wanna share with you, but first let's get this thing booted up. Uh, again, it's being kind of weird. Like I have to plug it in and it kind of just turns on by itself. The 2CI I think is having some capacitor issues. So let's get it all started up. But yeah, it just kind of turns on by itself when you plug it in. Disc CD300. All right, in terms of our setup, we have a Macintosh 2CI with eight megabytes of RAM. We have an Apple CD300, which transfers data over SCSI. And we have a four gigabyte external hard disk drive, again, over SCSI. There is no floppy drive, CD-ROM drive, or even hard drive inside this computer. So we're going all external. And as for the video out, we're converting to VGA and using this Samsung display, which has been my trusty display to use with this computer since I think 2009, when I did the first demo of it. Yeah, it's been around for a while. So it looks like it's not picking up on our disc right now. Sometimes it is a little bitchy trying to pick up on the SCSI external disc. So let's just jiggle it a bit. Okay, I feel really dumb. I feel really dumb. I don't have the DB25 cable plugged in. Wow, it's just one of those days, right? Okay, we're gonna have to shut this down because we should not be hot plugging this stuff. Yeah, now the Macintosh 2CI is not wanting to turn on. This has happened before. Sometimes it just needs to be plugged in for a few minutes. Uh, the clock battery is probably on its last legs and uh, the capacitors on the board are also <laughs> probably not doing so well. So we're gonna give it some time to juice up and then we'll do some, we'll do some video editing. So while it's juicing up, I'll kind of talk about what's up here. So I do a show called Vintage Apple Vault, where I explore the history and the stories behind vintage Apple products and their collectors. It's a lot of fun. So what I did was I took a few clips from episode two and I converted them to Apple video format. And I also made some custom title slides because we can't generate titles in Adobe Premiere 1.0 and I converted those to picked files and I burned them to a CD. So I'll throw these in here and we'll import them and edit with those. So basically we're gonna make a very miniature vintage Apple Vault episode with the contents on the CD. Now the last episode I was doing this stuff on with the iBook did very well. It has over 100,000 views already. Brad Olson, who made the Off the Tracks documentary actually saw it, which made my day. And he said he forwarded it to Randy Ubelos and uh, that's pretty flattering. <laughs> that's very flattering. So that was great, huge success there. I want to follow up now and do the editing on the 2CI, a real 68K machine, as, as soon as it gets powered up. <laughs> Come on, baby. And what I tell you, it just turns on by itself. So now that that is working, let's do a reboot. There we go. That is what I wanted to see. And while that's loading up, let's put the assets into the disk drive. Which yes, it's really cool that it says caddy loaded when you insert the disk, like the actual physical flap changes. A couple viewers pointed that out to me. It's just those nice little touches that Apple puts in their hardware that I really like. Le voila, we're at the desktop. That's great. All right, let's make a new folder. We'll call this VAV for Vintage Apple Vault. Open that up. Got the CD. So let's start with importing our assets into the SCSI disk. Drag those over there. 
Oh, this might be a 2.5 gig disc. I think I said four earlier. It might be two and a half or something. We have about 2,400 megabytes available though. So that's plenty. If I sort this by name, you'll see, I just have everything in order as for how it's going to appear. So our picked files are the title graphics and these files are Apple video documents for compatibility with QuickTime 2.5. Okay, so let's go to our applications and we're ready to go. Let's launch Premiere. Adobe Premiere Macintosh version 1.0 written by Randy Ubelos. Okay, here it is. This is Adobe Premiere 1.0, as you saw probably on the G3 video. If you haven't seen that, feel free to check it out. But now we're running it on 68K. We have the preview window, the info window, the project window where we import our files, the construction window, which is now known as a timeline, and our special effects with, it, with our fun little previews. And let's import our assets. So Command-I, the shortcut we still use today on the Mac for Premiere. We're gonna import, I don't think you can import more than one at a time, so we're just gonna have to do one at a time. Let's open that. This is gonna be a test of patience, by the way. Oh great, my mouse cursor disappeared. That's not a good sign. Oh great. Yeah, I'm getting no responsiveness from the mouse cursor. Let's see, command, option, escape. Yeah, force quit is also not showing up. Restart, my restart shortcut on the keyboard is also not responding. Not sure if that's normal though. All right, we're just gonna have to do a reboot. Use the reboot button on the computer. All right, restart. Shit. Dang it, is this not gonna work? I hope it does. All right, so hopefully this reboot helps. Yes, 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 I know. I didn't shut it down properly because it froze. Okay, well, here we are. Let's hide the finder windows and let's try importing a file. Um, let's see if the preview works. Creating preview. Okay, it looks like it stopped, but I still have a mouse cursor. All right. At least we have the force quit panel this time. That's weird. I, I don't know. Those picture files were working in Adobe Premiere on my iBook. And I did the conversion to an actual picked file. They were originally JPEGs, but I did a conversion to picked with Adobe Premiere 1.0. Well, there's my thumbnail. I can see me. It's loading that. Okay, well, that's a good sign. Well, let's start with that. Let's try opening an Apple video file. That worked, that worked just fine, perfect. It's right there. Okay, let's import another one. File number five. Boom, bon appetitle. File number six. Okay, so let's save this. We'll just save it to the folder where all the assets are. We'll just call it VAV, Vintage Apple Vault, save. Okay, so the video file's imported just fine. And it's actually really cool seeing like my modern 4K black magic footage converted into little postage stamp movies. Yeah, we're at 160 by 120. We're gonna be working in, I think these video files are 15 frames. Oh shoot, nope, didn't mean to do that. I meant to go here. Yeah, we're gonna be working at 15 frames per second. That's what the video files are in. The Apple video files are 15. So we'll preview in 15 and we'll output when we actually render the movie in 15 as well using Apple video. It looks like we have Cinepak in here too. Yes, that would make sense. Let's try importing those pictures again. Yeah, it's not, it's not liking that. Okay, maybe there's something wrong with the picture file. Let's open this in simple text because simple text should be able to read pictures. Hmm, that's not normal. Yeah, this locked up the software. I think this picture file is corrupted. I have no title graphics. That's a shame because uh, I spent a whole four seconds making those, but there is hope because I think we have Photoshop on here. So we can just like hand paint our own, or we could go really MacGyvery and like take a screenshot of like a Word document with a title on it. Oh, actually we could do that because we could just crop it. Okay, so this will be vintage Apple vault road pizza edition because of the old video format. And we'll make that Chicago and we'll make that nice and big. And we'll just take a screenshot right here. I believe this is what we just did. There it is, all right. So we'll take that and we'll just call this our title. And we'll 
dump this into here. Good, this will be our backup solution because apparently these picture files do not want to work. Don't know why, but it's not just Premiere that can't read them. Even simple text can't read them. So I think they got corrupted during the conversion process. Oops, but we have a somewhat decent alternative. So let's go to our recent apps, go to, oh, Premiere's not showing up in there. Okay, I'll just have to go here. Actually, why am I going through the finder? We have an Apple menu. We have a menu with things in it. We can go through it like this and click, boom. And let's import our lovely title creation. And this is actually great because now we have an excuse to make like a garbage man. Oh, you, you bastard. Okay, um, we're gonna, now I guess we have to get Photoshop involved. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're, we're just like using everything. Oh, it might be 1280 wide. Really? Is that what it is right now or is it just guessing? I don't know. Let's just do, yeah, 50%. Um, let's just, let's just guess. I don't even, I really don't know what I'm doing with this. Let's just try it. Oh, that's weird. There's a, oh, I know what it's doing. That's why that icon disappeared. It took a picture of the second display. There's no second display hooked up, but there's a video card hooked up. There's, a, there's two video cards, I believe, inside this computer, and I didn't really pay attention to that earlier. I'm gonna take this. Oh, right there, look at that. Oh, Photoshop, you beautiful piece of software. That's all, that's literally all I needed. <laughs> let's save that out. All right, let's import. Title cropped. Oh boy, it's not showing up as a file. Maybe it'll work. Oh, it did, yay, oh my gosh, we're saved. All right, guys, it's time to make a movie, finally. Oh, I appreciate your patience. Let's start with our title at the beginning. We'll just kind of like lay this out and then we'll do some transitions and that cool stuff. Let's zoom out the timeline a little bit, extend our play range. All right, so we have our title and now let's import our clips. So we have clip number four where I'm talking and then I'm gonna cut away to this B-roll shot, which I guess I could put in the B-track, but I already trimmed it up. So really could just go right here on the A-track. And then we have uh, number six here. So so let's see, let's zoom in here because uh, previewing this isn't as easy as it is nowadays. Like it takes a while. So if you want to measure stuff out, measure it with the time ruler first. <laughs> let's move this down, move this down, move this down. We'll extend this a little bit. So now that's three seconds long. I'm just using the info window because again, you, get, you gotta kind of measure this stuff out before you just preview it because previewing isn't just immediate and easy like it is now. Okay, uh, we're gonna add a mat for the end. So we're just gonna fade to black here. I'm just gonna call that black. All right, we'll put that at the end there. And again, we won't do the transitions and stuff yet. We'll get to that later. And we'll trim our, I don't know if they call it a playback area there. Work area, that's right. All right, so we have a title, some A-roll, and then a couple B-roll clips that I'm just putting in the A-roll track, essentially. 160 by 120. Sometimes we'll get better playback if I shrink the preview window down, but right now I'm just gonna resize it to the native size of the project. We'll just kind of rearrange a few things here. All right, so our preview options, yep, 15 FPS, that should be Accurate. Now, the playback is probably going to lag like crazy. When we actually export the movie, it should play back better inside of the movie player. But inside Premiere, we're probably not going to get near that performance. But let's try. Return. There's our title. There's our A-roll. Picking up the display. Cutting to a B-roll shot of the display. And then cutting to a B-roll shot of the cube. Me pressing the power button. And then cut to black. As you can see, the sequence worked really well there. Definitely not the highest frame rate, but that's okay. Like we can export it and watch it in smoother, res a smoother playback later at 15 FPS. <laughs> Effects, okay, let's do, what effect shall we do for our title? Now the title is being, it's, it's, um, it's kind of stretchy. I don't remember how to <laughs> adjust that. Oh, I just learned something new, okay. And I can't undo that. When you hold down the control key, you get a little blade tool. Well, that's cool. I had no idea. Well, let's get rid of that and just extend that back out. But yeah, I don't know how to, oh, let's see, maintain aspect ratio. There we go. So now that's probably just gonna be letterboxed like that, I would imagine. There we go. I wonder if I put white in the background, if the white will fill this black. I, 
I somehow doubt that, but we're gonna try it. What if I do this? Oh yeah, now the white just fills it. Um, hmm, so obviously, no. Okay, so B must still be in the background. I bet if I move this out, you'll see the title. Yep, there it is. All right, well, I guess it's just gonna be letterboxed. Yeah, I can't get the transparency settings to not be grayed out. I don't know why. Super. Now I get transparency settings. And I have no idea what I just did there. I don't know why my cursor turned to a glove and put those dots there. Oh, wait, hang on, that's keyframes. These are keyframes. Oh. Oh, something happened there. Okay, I don't know, maybe it's superimpose. I don't know, because now it's showing up with the white and the keyframing going over it with the dissolve there. So we kind of discovered something. All right, so I'm just gonna go with the letterbox of that. You know, hang on a second. I, 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 deserve, I desire more in life. I have an idea. I'm gonna hide that. We're gonna go back to Photoshop quick. Paste that in there. There we go. Let's import that picture. Drag that in. Retime it, about three seconds. Bump all this stuff over. Expand the work area. Preview that. There you go, road pizza edition. <laughs> All right, let's do some effects. What effects should we use to go from the title to my beautiful face? How about some barn doors? The cross dissolve has some leggy issues, I've noticed. Okay, so to be honest, I don't know how the alignment for this works. I've never fully figured it out, so let's just experiment. Or experiment, apparently I pronounce it wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely not how that's supposed to happen. <laughs> let's see what it's like over here. Hmm, forward reverse, probably anti-aliasing quality. Flip, that's what I'm guessing those buttons do. Okay, so now it's going in. Oh man, okay. I think I see what's going on here. That's command period that. Stop that playback. Move this over. So now it should go in from black to the title with this wipe. Oh yeah, isn't that, that's Hollywood, dude. Let's do a page turn. Let's watch this not work. Yeah, it's going to black. And then it... Oh, you know what? I think I know why. Yeah, I got this. I figured you out, Randy. I know what you're doing. You want this down here. That's what you want. But I'm thinking like A is bridged by the effects track to the B track. There we go. That's what I wanted. <laughs> we figured it out. Randy, we did it. So yeah, essentially then, I'll have to move this down here. Or not necessarily. I can have that up here still. But I will need this down here so we can fade to black. Or we could do an iris. Do like an iris effect. All right, so let's take a look at this with our footage, titles, and transitions. So we have the barn door at the beginning with our awesome road pizza edition. And then we page turn to the A-roll shot of me talking. Cut to the B-roll shot. Cut to another shot. Oh, shit. I forgot to adjust my work area. And iris wipe. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we just made a mini movie of Vintage Apple Vault on a Macintosh 2CI in Adobe Premiere 1.0, 160 by 120 resolution at 15 frames per second. And here is the timeline. <laughs> Let's save those changes. Cool. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of like exploring and treasure hunting, you know? Getting those feelings of like, oh man, I got this working. I like that. It, this must be kind of like when Alexander Graham Bell heard the first ring on his phone. Like, that must have been a really cool feeling. That was probably way cooler than this, but still, this is kind of like that. Make, figuring out how to make it work and then having it work. It's a cool feeling and I'm happy to share it with y'all Let's make the movie now. So this is where we're actually gonna render The movie in Apple video format into a QuickTime Actually, I don't know if they actually called them QuickTime movies back then I don't know because the movie player wasn't called QuickTime player. It was just called movie player QuickTime was the I guess the API or the extension. I don't know what exactly it was called. Let's output this masterpiece to the desktop Call it Vintage Apple Vault Premiere Test. I'll put options. 
Let's just make sure everything's good. We don't have sound. I, I couldn't get sound conversion to work. I didn't really experiment with that too much, but uh, this computer can't output sound anyway. I think the sound card is toast. So we could use animation, Cinepack, Apple Video, 15 FPS, 160 by 120, do the entire movie. Boom, and boom. We are now gonna start rendering. Here we go. Compiling movie, one moment please. And we're done. So, let's close out a premiere. Let's open up the movie player. Let's just check our version. QuickTime 2, but then here it says 2.5. Okay, well, can't trust anybody anymore. <laughs> I think it's 2.5, but whatever. Go to the desktop, let's open our movie, and have some fun. Here's our masterpiece. Dun, da 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 ba 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 Vintage Apple Vault, Road Pizza Edition. Page turn. Yeah, this plays back way smoother. Oh, look, we had a little flash there. Crap. <laughs> Gotta fix it in post now. <laughs> yeah, I think I lined up the frames wrong or something because the transitions have, like, a brief flicker of the footage when it shouldn't be doing that. But still, it, it worked. That's it. Like, it worked. That's pretty cool. Present movie. I think we can get full screen out of this. Oh yeah, it is picking up two displays, because I do have two cards in here, I just don't have two monitors hooked up. Cool. I should hook up two monitors to this thing one time. <laughs> this might lag. Oh yeah, this is a terrible performance now. <laughs> That's still pretty cool though. Oh, look at the look at all the dithering and the the macro blocking and the painting and tearing and just all the artifacts. I absolutely love it, because that's how it used to be. But yeah, it does play a lot better. It even kind of scrubs halfway decently. Look at that. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, the bigger you make the window, the laggier it's probably going to be. Yeah, but if you shrink it down, play it. Oh yeah, you can even do this. There we go. Look at that. Vertical video. You got nothing on this. This is real vertical video. This is the good shit. Oh, it just, I've never seen this before. It just quit on me. Well, thank you, Premiere. Error type one, uh, look up the Google machine. Yeah, I have a feeling something got effed up because uh, I can't even open the menu now. Can't do anything. Reboot time. But yeah, I was just about to wrap the tech video log and I wanted to open Premiere one more time to get one more bit documented. And uh, yeah, now it's like, phew. F you. Ladies and gentlemen, we made a movie. That was a lot of fun. Well, let me know what other vintage software you want to see. I have the Macintosh 2CI and the Macintosh TV as my old Mac software and hardware Petri dishes. So if you have suggestions, let me know. I'd be happy to try some of your ideas. Thank you so much for watching. Catch the crazy and pass it on.